Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to The Art of Water. So if you're like me and you're traveling around all the time and you're looking at different hardscapes and wood and plants and so forth, uh, I have a really bad habit of picking up uh, different kinds of uh, pieces of rock that are interesting to me or something I've never seen before or something that I might be thinking about for a future project or whatever and I end up with these bins full of rock and hardscape that uh, I haven't used but uh, could use in the future. Now one of the things that we don't think about which I think is really important if we're going to be doing this is what are the types of rock that we're getting and what effect do those rocks have on the long term um, health, I would say, of our tanks. I'm talking about the pH, I'm talking about the water hardness, and the overall health that those rocks may have on our fish. If you have crazy swinging pHs all the time and your fish are not doing well, you know, it may be just right here is the answer to the problems that you're having in your tank. It may be the rock that you're using. So today we're going to dive into this a little bit. We're going to talk about the kinds of stone out there that are um, available to the hobby and what I think you should stay away from and things that I think that are very beneficial to your tank such as this little gem right here which I'm not going to tell you until we get into the video a little bit what kind of stone this is and why this is such a magical stone for keeping your tank in a extremely healthy situation. So. Stick with me and we'll be right back and uh, we'll uh, solve the mystery of the rock and how it affects your tank. Hang in there with me, we'll be right back. Even though Seachem and Aquavitro are not an official sponsor of this channel, I do hope that you'll go out and try some of their amazing products today. They're some of the best on the market. Now let's get to our video. Hey everyone, how's it going? So today's subject is going to be about hardscape and in particular we're going to be talking about rock. Now I tend to go and collect hardscape as I see things that I might want or interesting to me, whether it be wood, rock, plants, etc. And uh, of course today what we're looking at is rocks in particular and that is going to be the subject of our video today. So uh, looking through this bin there is this particular rock here which I'm sort of sorting through this bin right now trying to find all the pieces that I can because it's going to be kind of a rather large uh, project that I'm doing and I'm going to need enough of this stuff to really uh, give me um, all the rock that I'm going to need to put this, this uh, particular uh, project together. So I'm going to sit down here because this is hard on the knees. But anyways, as I'm sorting through this rock, I got thinking about, I thought, you know, I'm going to video this because there's a lot of times that people don't understand. No, this is not an accurate commercial. I don't want you to be confused by that. But um, a lot of times when we're looking for a particular rock and deciding on what we're going to scape a tank with, we think about a lot of different things that may go into that. What kind of fish we're going to put in that tank how the rock will affect those fish as far as pH, uh, water hardness, all of those things which are important to the long-term health of the fish. So um, when you are doing that, you know, if you keep a bin of rocks like this, now this is one of five bins that I personally have of rock that um, really gives me a lot of abilities to choose something that is going to work for whatever project I happen to be working on. As I said, I collect 
you know, wood, rocks, plants, etc., and I do keep them on hand. Now, the important thing about this is that I always have something on hand that I know that I have in mind for a future project, and it just is, you know, whenever that time for that project pops up, it's going to be something that I know that I can go right to one of these bins, and uh, typically, you know, on this side, it's the, I'm not going to lift this because it's really heavy, but on this side here, all the rock that is in here is labeled as to what I am keeping in this particular bin. So, uh, anyways, I wanted to talk about that because we don't understand sometimes the effect that rock has on the things that I just talked about, your pH, your hardness, and so forth, and how that is going to affect the long-term health of your fish. So. Um, again, in this particular bin, for example, we have maple stone, which is very, very good because it's porous. We have uh, tons of dragon stone in here. Uh, we also have uh, this stone right here, which I don't know the name of because I just got this recently, and it was so unique because I'd never even seen it before. And uh, also, we have uh, some sandstone in here, which uh, is a great rock for certain aquariums, but uh, I'm not real fond of the look of it, so it just has to be the right project. I have used it before, and you have seen it in some of my videos, but uh, what we're going to be talking about is the different ways in which rock, like I said, affect the aquarium and what you want to think about when you go into planning a scape as to how those uh, pieces of rock are going to affect the fish that are in there. And we choose rocks for different reasons, and we're gonna talk a lot about that today. And uh, let's go back upstairs here to the gallery. I've got some rocks already picked out up there for us to look at, and I'm gonna drag this rock up there too because, like I said, I'm working on a project. But anyways, hang in there with me, and we'll be right back. So welcome back everyone. As I said earlier in the segment, uh, if you're like me and you've been in the hobby for a while, you're one of these people that probably uh, when you see a nice looking stone or something that's unusual that you've never seen before or whatever, you'll tend to pick it up, bring it home and say, you know, I'm going to use that on a project later on. Lots of times we have no idea what the rock is uh, or the person maybe that we're purchasing it from doesn't even have an idea of what the rock is. So uh, it's really important that when we're buying this stuff and collecting it, which I'm guilty of this, I have bins full of rock and hardscape uh, such as wood and plants that uh, I don't always know the background of these particular items and the effect that they may have on the particular project that I'm doing. Now, I want to clarify that I am talking about freshwater aquariums only here. I am not getting into salt water, so if you're following this and uh, you clicked on this particular video because you thought I was going to cover salt water, I'm really not. I don't have a a background in that that qualifies me to really talk about um, the hardscape that goes into uh, those kinds of aquariums. So getting back to what I was saying here, we've got four different pieces of rock in front of me here, all of which are extremely different from each other, all of which are very different in the way that they're going to react uh, long term in your aquarium and how they're going to affect uh, water parameters. Now, when I say water parameters, I'm talking about pH, I'm talking about water hardness, and I'm talking about the overall health of your tank and uh, the biological uh, well-being of that tank. In other words, there are certain stones that are more biologically beneficial to your tank than others, and may affect uh, uh, the colonization of the good bacteria that we're looking for. And then there's other stones that will have literally no effect on it at all, and we need to get those uh, uh, 
elements that uh, build good bacteria into our system in a completely different way and the rocks are either neutral in that effect or they have a minimal effect on, uh, like I said, pH and hardness and so forth. Now, the, the couple of rocks that I want you to 100% stay away from if you are in this hobby are limestone number one. These stones uh, tend to throw pHs all over the place. Uh, they are not good. They are going to harden your water. They are going to uh, drive your pH way up and cause a lot of problems that are going to have an overall effect on the, the well-being and health of your fish. So when you are thinking about putting a hardscape together, I want you to avoid those kinds of stones just because long term they're not going to be good for the health and welfare of the aquarium. So the stones that I have in front of me here, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on them because I don't wanna make this a long video. I just wanna make you aware of something because people ask me about this all the time and I've never really made a video about it because I never really thought about, uh, you know, what you might be using in your aquariums. I know what I'm using in mine simply because obviously I've collected those stones and I've thought about, uh, like I said, not always, sometimes I'll buy a stone or whatever from uh, an aquarium store or a fish store and I won't really have a history on that particular rock but I do find out always what the name of the stone is and I do try to do a little bit of research on it before I ever use it. So let's get right to it here and talk about the different stones that I think uh, can be um, good for your aquariums and you may have to make some modifications however as to pH and things like that. Now the first stone that we have here is uh, very, very high in um, sands. It, it's a sandstone, but it's, it, it has more lime in it than most of these other rocks that we're looking at here. Now uh, it's a pretty rock. I don't use it a ton, but uh, I have used it in uh, several different uh, tanks in the past. It can be very pretty. I have used it uh, in other people's aquariums as well. And again, it can be um, a very pretty uh, rock to use. But with this one here, you're gonna have to keep an eye on your pH because the first thing that this is going to do is drive your pH probably up and your water hardness as well. Now there are fish out there that are extremely sensitive to pH and hardness and you really have to think about when you're putting this in your tank, what are you going to be stocking that tank with and is it going to have a detrimental or damaging effect on the overall health of the fish that you're going to end up putting in there. So it's something really to think about. Now this is a more dense stone and uh, probably is going to have the least amount of effect on your tank simply because it's not going to leach out its, uh, um, its uh, compositional makeup very easily. In other words, it's extremely hard and it's extremely heavy. So uh, these are great stones for just about any kind of tank out there. They're typically going to, uh, I don't even know the name of this stone. I, I just got it here recently, and unfortunately, I don't know the name of it, but uh, I will put that in the comments down below um, at the end of the video so that you do know what all of these stones are. I will make sure that uh, there's a hashtag down below uh, that gives you some information on these. But this stone in particular is going to be very... Uh, very consistent uh, once it's in your tank and your tank is cycled and it's settled out uh, the pH is going to run probably around 6.5 to 7.0 at the most 
which most fish are going to um, thrive and really do well in that. Now, I'm going to skip over this one for a minute here. Everyone knows what this is. This is Dragonstone, and we're going to talk about that at the end, but we're going to cover two other types of uh, rock that I think are extremely beneficial, and I have found uh, probably the healthiest tanks that I have in my gallery are from stones uh, such as this one right here, which is called maple stone. Now, maple stone is very porous. It's very lightweight. It's, well, I wouldn't say it's extremely lightweight, but it's, it's more lightweight than any of these here except for the dragon stone. And we're going to get to the dragon stone in a minute here. But this and red lava rock or black lava rock are probably the three main stones that I would tell you are the absolute best for your aquarium. And the reason for that is, is they're very pH neutral, number one. The second thing is, is they're extremely porous, so they make really good breeding ground for beneficial bacteria into your tank. So if you're using this, for example, with sand, or if you're using this with uh, um, let's just say uh, gravel of some kind, uh, not any particular color or whatever, but if you're using this with gravel, uh, that gravel is not going to be something that colonizes good bacteria as well as say a fluval stratum or uh, you know some of the sea chem products out there that are made specifically uh, of substrate that helps to colonize and grow plants and that sort of thing. This is going to help make up for that because it is a very, very porous rock. And I don't have any red lava rock or black lava rock here right now. I just don't have any on hand because I've used it all up. But those two rocks are actually excellent because they're extremely lightweight and they hold the same benefits as the maple stone does, and that is that it gives the, uh, the hobbyist an opportunity to have a stone in their tank that is going to help colonize with good bacteria all the, the uh, good bacteria that you're going to need to keep that tank healthy, especially, like I said, if you're using gravel as a substrate or sand which are, you know, both not going to do very much to help keep uh, a good colony of bacteria in your tank. Uh, you're going to have to rely on your filtration system to do that and your, your hardscape, such as your stone here, to do that. Now, we're going to get down to this one here because it's the messiest, and when I pick it up, it's going to make an absolute mess on this black mat here. But I want to talk about this because Dragonstone is one of the more popular rocks that we find out there that people are using today. And I think it's really important that we talk about this and we talk about the makeup of Dragonstone. Dragonstone is about 85% clay. It's a very, very soft rock with a lot of character. It is beautiful in so many ways. And the reason I say that is you can see obviously why it's called Dragonstone. It is extremely uh, scaly looking and has just an absolutely beautiful, I think, look to it that uh, enhances any tank. Now, uh, what you're going to find with this particular stone is that, as I said, it's got a lot of clay in it and is not going to change your pH dramatically, but you're going to find that uh, Dragonstone is likely to be one of those stones that can make your, uh, especially if it's a new tank, make your water very murky. Uh, when you're cleaning it, uh, it will tend to flake off and, uh, you know, become a mess in the bottom of your tank. So. As beautiful as it is, it can be extremely messy, but it is pretty neutral as far as pH and certainly not a stone that's going to create a lot of hardness in your water. 
And uh, so therefore, a good stone, uh, one that is commonly used, as I said, in the hobby, and is not going to create any serious problems for you. I really like this stone. I think it's beautiful, and I have used it in several of my tanks. I don't have anything in this particular gallery that I'm using this with right now, but uh, I do have other tanks in other parts of my home uh, that are using Dragonstone, and I've literally had no problems. In fact, some of these tanks have been set up for more than a year or two and look as good as the day that I got them. Now, we're going to get into talking just for a few more minutes here about some other things that stone can affect. And number one uh, is algae. What kinds of stones create an environment for algae to grow the most? And my experience is that algae uh, which is the brown algae, you know, the diatom algae, is one of the more common algaes that we see early on in the, uh, just after a tank cycles, and uh, we start to um, stock our tanks. Uh, if you're using this kind of stone right here, which is very dense, you're going to see that that brown algae will tend to cover the surface of something like this a lot quicker than it will any of these others simply because uh, it's able to just sit on the surface and uh, really not uh, make a big influence on, uh, like I said, pH swings or anything like that. But diatom algae, the brown algae, is something that all of us are going to deal with at some point when we are cycling a tank. Now, if you're seeding your tank from an old um, aquarium where the colony of good bacteria is uh, such that uh, you really um, have a lot of that in the tank, and you don't have to worry about it, you may not see as much of that brown algae show up. Uh, as you stock your fish in the tank, you, you likely will, but uh, you won't see a, a ton of that uh, building up in there from a seeded tank, just because you, you've already got uh, a instantly cycled tank that is not going to go through that uh, phase having that brown algae that's going to stick to the rock. So I hope that I've helped you a little bit today to understand the effects of rock and what they uh, can do to your aquarium as far as, uh, you know, creating different um, pH levels, different hardnesses, and so forth. Again, stay away from limestone. Stay away from anything like that. Do not put marble in your freshwater tanks. Marble is extremely hard uh, as far as the pH and the hardness of uh, the stone itself. It's going to cause the water to be hard. So stay away from limestone and uh, uh, marble uh, as the two main stones that are going to create a environment that is going to cause havoc in your tank. You just don't want it in there. It, it leaches constantly uh, lime out of the stone itself and creates an environment that is very, very unhealthy for your fish and unstable for uh, the tank itself. So uh, I hope that I helped you understand a little bit more about how rock can affect your, your, overall, your overhaul. Uh, I can't talk. The overall health of your aquarium and give you some perspective as to how you can avoid those crazy swings in pH and hardness and the water. Now there are some products out there that you can use. Uh, Seachem makes a couple of different ones. Seachem uh, has what they call neutralizer and uh, it basically will neutralize your pH down to a 7.0, but that's something that you're gonna have to monitor all the time and use all the time when you're doing water changes and so forth. So uh, keep in mind when you're scaping your tanks, 
the kind of hardscape that you're putting in there and what the overall effect is going to be on the well-being of that tank long term and the health and general health of all of the uh, stock that you put in that tank. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it as always. Please hit uh, that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Also leave your comments down below if you have um, something you want to add about the different uh, rocks that uh, you've experienced in your tanks and uh, uh, you know I want to hear from you so leave those comments down below and uh, if for some reason your tank has been all over the place on pH and uh, hardness you don't probably have to look any further than the rock that you're using in your tank and you don't have to go in and tear the tank all apart and redesign it based on that. There are things that you can do to soften the water. Now, one of the things that I recommend, and this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about before we end this video, is one of the things that I recommend is taking any stone that you're not familiar with or is not well known to the hobby. Uh, for example, I collected some stone up in Montana last year. I knew nothing about it, I just liked it. And uh, basically, putting it in a bucket uh, for about a week, testing it the first day that you put it in the bucket to see what the pH and the hardness of the water is, and then testing it a week later to see what changes there were in it. Also, sometimes you can tell uh, by uh, using a little bit of vinegar that you just uh, drop on the top of any stone that might have a lot of lime in it and you're concerned about that. If there is lime in that stone, that vinegar is going to bubble up and react to the lime that's in there, and uh, that's going to tell you a lot. So anyways, thank you for joining me today. Please, like I said, hit that uh, subscribe and like, and uh, also hit the bell up here for any new content that may be coming out. We've got lots of new stuff coming up here. Um, we are still working on the discus tank and uh, the fish are here now just waiting for a couple of items that are supposed to show up in the, the mail and we're going to be hitting that project here pretty hard over the next couple of weeks so anyways like i said hit the bell up at the top there so that you don't miss any content and share with your friends this channel is building simply because a lot of people that watch are sharing this with their friends and I really do appreciate it. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. George here with The Art of Water. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, we'll talk to you soon.